All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we get a 2021 Dodge Charger SXT. And since this is the SXT, this is gonna be the base, base model you can get. Nothing extra, this is the base, base model. And this is what our key looks like. It looks exactly like a Dodge Charger GT key. And honestly, you wouldn't be wrong. But first of all, let's see what the front looks like. Because apart from the GT, this one doesn't have the big vent and the upgraded bumper as well too. This one just looks completely base. And unlock. That's our little horn. And if we go to the back. Basically the same amount of trunk space that's also in the GT and the higher trim models as well too. And below we get our battery and our spare tire. Engine size is also the same surprisingly. 3.6 liter V6, pushing 300 horsepower, 264 pound-feet of torque. And here's a little cold start. Very, very quiet. It is a V6 though. Rear wheel drive only with Firestone walls on it, Firestone tires. Dressed in a nice midnight purple as well. 3.6 liter V6, what's not to love, man? This is our base model, the SXT. This is what we're dealing with today. And if you hop inside real quick. Clutch seats everywhere. USB ports and some ventilation back here. And our cup holders as well too. That's pretty much everything, but you know what? It's still a full size sedan, so we still get a ton of leg room. And this is what the front looks like from the back. And you can kind of see on top over the driver, but not really. And I don't really have as much headroom. If I sit up straight like this, I barely have any headroom at all. Like my head is touching the ceiling and I'm six foot. So eh, take that into consideration. And if we hop into the front. Yeah, you see remote start was canceled because we opened the hood. But six inches off screen over here. Put your foot on the brake to start. Top speed of 260 kilometers an hour. And since this is the base model, we lose our sport mode. We don't have that anymore. We also lose our paddle shifters as well too. No more paddle shifters. And our seats are also cloth. I'm pretty sure I mentioned that as well. Seats are also cloth. Storage down here. Everything else is basically the same with the GT except for the appearance. And the loss of a few buttons like our traction control, not, tra not traction control, our sport mode and everything like that as well too. We also lost our performance pages as well. We no longer have our performance pages. So we can't see how fast we're going or how much horsepower we're using up. But let's quickly go into regular drive mode. Since we don't have a sport mode, most we can do is just turn off traction control. That's in the traction control sport mode. And do a little burnout, because why not, man? It's a charger. It's mandatory to do a burnout. There we go. There's some smoke. Tiny little burnout, because I'm not going to try and do anything too extra. Oh, I can smell the tires now. But anyway, turn off traction control. Let's go into regular driving mode. Again, 264 pound feet of torque is still a lot for a lot of people. And I would highly recommend this car for someone who wants something real drive and fun but can't afford anything with a bigger V8. Car seems smooth enough around the corners. It is super heavy and you feel the weight in every turn. And it's not meant for taking turns fast either too so please do not try taking this car on a track and expect uh, BMW levels of performance. Just expect regular Dodge charger sxt base model performance levels because honestly like yeah it is a base model so we can't put too high of an expectation on it but as we continue we're gonna do a quick little pull pretty sure we can't go on the highway it is still a pretty nice color the midnight purple is different from what you'd usually find on a car like this took us quite a while to accelerate to 60 
So this actually comes in a good seven seconds. Depending on the den, depending on how hard you step on it, you might be a little bit quicker. And if you're going downhill, of course it's gonna be quicker. But in general, we'll give it like a six to seven seconds to get to 60, which honestly isn't bad. And you really can't really ask for more. This is the base model. It does its job well. And I'm pretty sure this is more of a looker, to be honest. People get this car because it looks the parts. Not because of the acceleration, not because of the power it makes, but because of the looks factor. Looks are a huge, huge thing as well. So if it looks good, most people say if it looks good and feel good, what more can you want? I just don't like the as absence of the paddle shifters. The GT just one trim model above this one does have the paddle shifters and a slightly bigger screen. But pretty much everything else is pretty much case and points the exact same. It still tries to accelerate as quickly as possible even without the sports mode on. Of course the sport mode simply what it does it just lets you have a higher RPM for a little bit longer. And since you have a longer RPM you're in your ideal power band for a little bit longer giving you the best performance the car can offer. But since we're in a base model, we don't get as many options as that. But again, you can tune this thing if you really, really wanted to. Just improve a few things. And of course, if you're gonna upgrade your car, please keep up with your maintenance. Cause if you don't maintain your car and you just decide to keep upgrading it, it's not a good time for a lot of people. So again, if you're gonna upgrade your car, Keep up with the maintenance. Keeps it nice and healthy and happy as well too. But you know what, back to the driving aspects of this thing. The thing is the V6 isn't as underpowered as most people would have you believe. 300 horsepower is still a lot. And every time you step on it, it does launch you back into your seat just a little bit. It's not crazy where it has you like sticking at the back of your headrest like all the time like, ah, oh no, but it's enough power for you to appreciate how much 300 horsepower really, really is. And again, it's a charger, man. This thing looks the part. And since this is the base, base model, people usually assume you're a cop because cops now do have undercover chargers that look similar to this. And people always think that I'm a cop, which is nice. They behave, but then they slow down and try and act like they ain't doing anything wrong. Which is good, please obey the law, children and citizens. But again, it's just the look aspect that comes into play. You look like a cop, people will treat you like a cop, and again, it has pros and cons as well too. We also have voice activation down here and our cruise control buttons as well over here. And this one, surprisingly some of the GTs actually don't have heated seats, surprisingly, or heated steering wheel. This one does have both. We do have both heated, seat, heated seats and a heated steering wheel, which is pretty damn nice. Especially for us Canadians who will be in the winter, man. Like, that is a must have. Heated seats are like a lifesaver here in Canada, especially in the peak of winter. Just had to make sure because it turned like the traffic light was changing. But if you step on it, Still aggressive launching and everything. Everything about it is still aggressive. The car is always gonna be aggressive and it tries to be aggressive in every aspect it does. The acceleration, the look, the feel, even the V6 red lines as often as it can if you step on it fully. And of course, we do consume a little bit more gas. Let's see what our gas mileage looks like right now. So right now we are consuming 10 by six liters for every 100 kilometers, which is not bad for a V6. That competes really well, actually, if you think about it. If you put this thing on the highway and just cruise along, you're gonna save a ton on gas because it's just in this ideal power range and it's just cruising down the road. Now let's give our cruise control a little go. We're set to 69 kilometers and it's just maintaining that. Of course, we don't have any lane assist modules with us or blind spot monitoring, so you still have to have your foot ready on the brake because it doesn't have any sensors in front of it to even 
assume that something's going on, you're just like, boom, straight into the oncoming traffic. If you find yourself in this situation, but let's slow down a bit to a 57. Pretty responsive, actually. Not bad. And the cruise at this speed is so smooth and so comforting. Like, it's really, really nice. You almost forget that you're in a muscle car. Well, a V6 muscle car for all that is worth. But, sound system, this one doesn't have a subwoofer in the back. So let's try and see what it sounds like. Pretty decent. You can still jam out to your music pretty well. Now let us cancel our cruise control. Still very confident in the corners though, even though it's heavy, you feel the weight and the gigantic brakes on this thing, like there's so much body roll in this thing. Body roll in the sense that the car doesn't like the sharp turns you're trying to pull it through. Which is okay, I understand that. The car is not meant for high turn rates like that. It's meant for straight line speed. But the fact that it's still confident in a turn speaks the volumes of the little sports car that this is. So for a base model, this might arguably be one of the best base models you can get if you don't want to go for German cars. Cause if you want to get the German version, it'll be the, the 330i will be less horsepower, but it'll be much lighter than this one. So you gotta pick your battles wisely. And I'm confident, it, oop, did I mean to actually spin the tires there? Again, for a V6, it pushes a lot of ballsy power. And you know, this is the same engine that's in the SXT, which is the one that I'm in, and the GT. After that, you'll enter the RT, which is around 400 horsepower. So it'll be a huge jump, almost 100 horsepower jump for a V8. And then after that, you get the scat pack, then the Hellcats and everything else that's crazy powerful after that. But having a rear wheel drive base model SXT is not bad at all. And of course, we do have parking sensors. Because why not? And guys, this was just a quick little review by Morty about the Dodge Charger SXT. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more cars. Let me know what you guys want to see. And take it easy. Peace.